Okay, and live broadcast kicking in in a second. Hey guys, this is John. Welcome to all the live viewers as well as the viewers in the future on YouTube. Hello, this is Title Tuesday. 10 rounds of 3 plus 1 Blitz. I'm playing FM Barant in the first round. Been playing a fair amount of Title Tuesday recently. Let's play a Sicilian. Maybe a Smith Mora? No, Knight F3. Okay. Let's just play E6. We are off. Play a con Sicilian. Put the queen on c7. Protects the e5 square. Bring the knight out to f6. Bishop e2. Mm, I'd say not the most challenging move, but definitely playable. Hello, James Ramsden. Says good luck today. Thank you very much. Okay, king h1. Usually that's preparation for f4. Uh, let's just play d6. And put the knight on d7. Sorry if there's some background noise at the moment. I think they're mowing uh, our lawns outside my association, housing association. Okay, pretty standard stuff here. I'm always tempted to attack with the H-pawn in this situation, which I very well may do. I could also put the knight on C5 because this E4 pawn is lacking some protection. Just thinking how white might respond to that. But no, I think I like this approach. Because white's queen is not on the e-file at the moment, so harder for them to protect this pawn. Also, queen d3 is not possible. So white may be forced into playing e5. We could get a trade, and I'll pull the knight back to d7. Hey, Moldanka, good to see you too. Dragonfly, Persetex, greetings. How's the prep for Thursday coming? I think you mean Saturday. That's when I'm playing in the I Am Not a GM round of four. The final four against Greg. So yes, that is on Saturday, May, what is it, 17th, I believe? Pulling out my calendar right now. Uh, 16th, May 16th. Okay, E5. Yeah, let's take. And it's at 8 o'clock p.m. U.S. Central, so could be a late a late show for many of you viewers, especially in Europe. Okay, so I gave him this weak pawn. He's going to argue that if I castle, he has bishop h6, which is definitely a fair argument. So I could play g6 here. If I take the pawn on e5, he's going queen takes g7, so... Yeah, let's play g6. If he plays b4, I'll play knight takes e5, followed by knight back to d7. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Okay, bishop g5. Now he's maybe honing in on this square. Mm-hmm. Interesting play. Okay, so I take on e5, queen h4, we get a trade, maybe knight back to d7 at that point. Let's go for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, this one I didn't anticipate because now if I take here, he might be taking on e5 is his point. Definitely an interesting approach. Okay, let's go here. Got to protect f7 as well as the knight, especially the knight. If bishop here, I can play knight c4. Queen in. Castle, he still has bishop h6. Okay, let's go here. Actually, I think they're leaf blowing outside. Sounds like leaf blowers. 
Okay, so my king is in a bit of a jam, but I am up a pawn. Knight f3. Hmm. Already way down on the clock here. Step here. Okay, I'm going to take. Up a full piece here, but he does have h4, I suppose. Oh, man. He's throwing everything at me here. Put the knight here. These leaf blows are killing me right now. They're like right outside my door. <laughs> okay, I think I still have a good position. I probably didn't need to lose that rook, but what can you do? Trying to go queen c6. If he doubles, I have knight f2. If he wants to put his rook on d1. Try to play for a win here. This is risky, though. I don't know how to get out of this situation. Oh, that's not a way to get out. I foolishly allowed rook c5. Ah, resignable. All right. I pushed for a win there when I really, really should not have. Hey, Moxberry, thank you for subscribing. 16 months. Appreciate that. Yeah, he was throwing a lot at me when my king was in the center right here. Uh, let me back up. Right around here. I mean, I was up a piece, but my king couldn't get out of the center, which was somewhat of an issue. Knight d5. Inspired shot. I guess in hindsight, maybe it would have been safer to put the knight on e6. I think that would have been a better way to play it. Oh yeah, let me change the title. Hello, Vampire Chicken, by the way. Changing title, one second. How many players we got in this title Tuesday, by the way? Over a thousand. All right, there we go. Charles M4, thank you for subscribing. Twitch Prime. This is Hey John. Hello. <laughs> is that the computer fan? I wish, man. Then I actually might feel like I have some degree of control. This has happened a lot to me in the past where like, as soon as I go live, boom, the leaf blowers. <laughs> I 
Measuring Cups, thank you for subscribing, Twitch Prime. Okay. Let me go to a game here. We got three games left. Very likely Longreave, yeah. Let me pull my notifications up here, too. There we go. Hey, Charles M4. Gifting some subs to B. Chesser, X. Duff, X. Sling Shark, Saxy90. Hello to Saxy90. And G. No Kier. Thank you, thank you. Oh, and I gotta update my score, too. Okay, round two. Let's play D4. Playing an IM. Hey, Alexander the Great. Thank you for joining. I think we do need the man, man, man emote. Exactly. <laughs> uh, all right, let's take... Give a check. Okay. Castle. Hey, Tony. How's it going? Good to see you. Yeah, my hair is so long right now, it's ridiculous. I don't think I'm going to cut it. I think I'm just going to ride it out at this point. Okay, bishop g4. I like bishop g5. Attacking the pawn in this instance. So with the queen on a3, pretty helpful to do that. Hey, Shamgar. Good to see you. Also, Traces, hello. Yeah, title should be good now. Queen d6, hmm. I mean, I could take e7 and then go take on a3 when he recaptures. You have to move his rook. Seems like I'm just going to be more or less up upon there. Hello, Perchik, thanks for the 100 bits. Fabi predicted you would win the I Am Not a GM tournament and said he's watching all the games. That's awesome. But I get Fabi's support. <laughs> Battle Harpoons, I know, man. Eschner, thanks for the 200 bits. The Battle Spikes. I'm keeping them. For now, at least. Okay, so I'm up a pawn here, but he's doubtlessly going to argue that he has some compensation. His pieces do occupy some nice squares. Bishop b5. His knight c3, I suppose, but I don't think I should fear that. So trying to go after his rook here. You can play bishop d7 if he wants. This is a MJB powered stream, of course. <laughs> How could it not be, guys? Been drinking a lot of it lately. Plays Ricky six, okay. I'll pin him now. It is on Saturday, Seb JP. Hmm. <laughs> I'm going to step here, I think. He could play bishop h6 or move the knight. Now I was thinking knight g5 might be interesting. Going after that pawn on f7. Could play knight e2. Just looking for a trade. Hello, Keith. 
John, do you have any sponsors? No, I do not. Riding solo. Do check out the website I co-founded, though, Chessable. We have a lot of free resources for people to improve their game. Okay. We'll go for this trade. Okay, let's pull this here. And assuming he takes on C1... Ooh, he takes there. Interesting. I guess that is tactically possible. All right, let's take. So he's playing off the back rank issue. Go F4 here. It's now if he takes, I take here, so I am threatening to capture. This is Title Tuesday, yes. Mm -hmm. So he's playing to win the A2 pawn now. Makes sense. Seems like his back, re back rank is a little sketchy, though. Okay, now I'm threatening knight c3. Now that my bishop's secure, he'll probably look for some stability with that piece. If bishop d3, it's interesting to play rook d1. We'll see what happens here. Hmm. Threatening rook b8. So he really has to watch his back rank. This should be five. I'll play rook d1. Hmm. Could take en passant, knight, or knight g5? Knight g5 looks almost crushing. Let's try that. Like, how does he deal with rook d8? Taking en passant, definitely good too, though. And he just takes. And he's in a net here. Let's just start shedding pieces. All right, so we get a win. Yeah, he went, he played kind of maximalist there. He went for it all with the rook coming down to d2 and taking a2. So I was up a pawn before, now I'm down a pawn. But he has some issues with his king and his coordination. His bishop is pretty bad. Knight c3 is a threat now that the bishop on a3 is defended. So in a time pressure situation, especially, I can easily see how this backfired on him. Oaken, thank you for subscribing to your one sub. Yeah, time is definitely a big factor, even with the one second increment. Hey, and Jay Chester. Hello to you, Jay Chester. Good to see you. I just had a session with him yesterday. This is good luck Saturday, John. Thank you for the $10 donation. That's very kind of you, sir. Yes, thank you very much. I am playing on Saturday against Greg Shahadi. Let me pull up a game for you guys, by the way. The round of four in the I Am Not a GM tournament on chess.com. So thanks again, John. I know you'll be you'll be watching. Whoa, and Belgian novice just gifted. 10 subs to the channel. Belgian novice, you spoil me. Gifting those subs to Smokey Rook, DBZ Master, Bruno Rolla, Kid Basil, Chef Master, The Endgame Magician, PLB, Trabe, and Esoterica, and Walsh. Thank you very much, Belgian. You guys are very generous. I don't know who's doing the commentary, actually. I would suspect it's going to be Bobby Hess and... Danya Narditsky, because it is pretty late 
for non-US, non-North American viewers. But I would suspect it's going to be that duo again. Who do we got playing here still? Okay. Ooh, Faruja's in the field today. He hasn't really been playing much on chess.com. So, interesting to see him taking part. We got Hikaru. We got Daniel Dubov. Andrekin, Dimitri Andrekin. Yeah, typically strong title Tuesday. MVL is playing. Good stuff. Otis86, thank you for subscribing. Eight, uh, five months, Twitch Prime. Thank you, Otis. Cheers. Big support for my students today, as always. Thank you, guys. Okay, playing 8x8 eight eight chess. I, I'm taking the Swiss Gambit in this tournament, not intentionally. The Swiss Gambit is when you, you lose or perhaps draw your first round, but especially lose. <laughs> so the theory is that you, you tend to get easier pairings, of course, when that happens. I wouldn't recommend that as an intentional strategy, but... Uh, score is updated, yep. We've only played two games so far. I think I just miss, missed some bits there, but let's develop here. Mary Puffins, thanks for the 100 bits. This is thanks for all you do, John. I've been putting, or getting a lot out of Chessable lately. Uh, you can send me a whisper, Mary Puffins, about lessons. Okay, so we have a queen a5 Scandi where white has played h3. Not a challenging line. Also, white's castling short. Generally, against the queen a5 Scandi, I think you do want to castle long if you want an advantage. Not all the time. There are some dangerous lines with cast castling short, but most of the time, castling long is the preference. Okay, I'm just going to make way for my bishop to retreat. Drop this guy back first. Hey, Sneaky Victor. Hmm, he wants to trade the light square bishops. All right, I will do so. The Queen A5 Scandi was in a little bit of theoretical hot water, I would say, uh, for the past several years, but it's been recently revived, actually. And I've been looking into it a bit myself. So there may be some interesting stuff there. Okay. I'm going to play this move. And try to bait him into playing knight c4 so I can go queen a6 and pin him. Hello, pass pawn. A4. All right, so he's trying to make things awkward for my queen over there. Fair enough. Let's take. Takes with the rook. I was thinking rook d5 or knight d5 here. Maybe knight d5. Attack his bishop. So if c4, I can take his bishop and I'll be on his queen. CST Gene, thank you for subscribing. Four months. I have not checked that Wang Hao game. I heard that Fabi was talking about it, but I haven't had a chance to take a look at that Sun Tzu Lombardi. Thank you, Chessified. Good to hear that. Okay, pulls the bishop back to d2. So now I think queen c7 is a nice tidy move. We no longer have that bishop staring at us on the file. Plays knight h5. Hmm. <laughs> Here maybe? Yeah, I think so. Also threatening uh queen takes e5 in this position. Doug Stone, thank you for subscribing. Tier one. Okay, so he's keeping tension. Let's go rook d5. Hmm. 
I'm actually threatening Knight takes h5 now through the black rook, or through the white rook, rook rather, with the black's rook protection. So he trades. Get some swaps. Okay, now bishop takes h6 as a threat, so have to be aware of that. My bishop is kind of bad here. So I think I'm just going to trade it. I do take on a somewhat weak pawn on g5, but I have the queen coming in. f6 if I need it. Yeah, let's play f6. He's going to he's going to try to argue that this is a weakness. Hmm. Let's go queen f4. Good morning, old wumpus. Yeah, I do have a queen d8 scandy course on chessable. Absolutely. Okay, this or maybe this is what he's going for. Let's guard against the queen g6 threat in particular. Because queen b5, I can always tuck the rook on e7, so I don't think I'm too worried about that. Stop him from advancing. I think this is looking pretty level as we go into a time scramble. I guess I do somewhat like my position if, especially if I can pick this pawn off. Hmm. Let's take. Now, I could trade, but I think first I'm going to go here. There's queen d5 possible, but let's first play a solid move and see what he does. Because, yeah, now I get a check and I can win the d-pawn outright. I think I'm going to go here and tuck the king away. He's going to play for some sort of check ideas. King Cocoon going. Okay, mutual mistakes here, but whatever. You just got to play. Big mistakes by me. There's a check on e5. See if I can get him with f2. Queen f2 coming. Okay, now he's going to check me in a million places. Should be winning, though, at this point, Ooh, especially if I get the queen trade in. The always helpful queen trade. All right.
Not perfect at all. The leaf blowers are largely gone now. I haven't heard them in a while. <laughs> so that helps. So very long sloppy game right there, but I do get the full point. I was surprised he didn't play b4 in this position when my queen was attacking his pawn on a5. But then I was thinking about playing rook c8 and pressuring him, but I mean, white definitely doesn't have to panic rook e3 or something. Andre, thanks for the 300 bits. Cheers. Okay, some games finishing. That was a pretty long game, so I expect the next round will start pretty soon here. Let's watch Hikaru. Hikaru is desperately trying to win. A drawn endgame. Rook and Bishop against Rook and Bishop. Not even Rook and Bishop against Rook, which is a title Tuesday classic. <laughs> Team Scandi prevails, yes. Sometimes you have to grind it out. Actually, very often you have to grind it out in endgames in Team Scandi. It's great for your technique. Okay, and Vishnu Prasanna gets a draw against Hikaru. We are three rounds in. I see Mama Dyarov is also playing. And I am playing Master Croquette. Okay. FM Master Croquette. <laughs> nice, James. Let's play a semi slot for a change. Sam Shanklin recently produced an awesome course on the Semislav on Chessable. He recommends this variation. The uh, Cambridge Springs. Yeah, 92. I was a little uncertain how to play against this. I'm going to take. And then I get the bishop pair. It's a bit of a cramped position, but black can take his time in getting his pieces out here. So bishop e7, just castle. And often you can play either b6, bishop b7, or in some cases you can play rook d8, bishop d7, bishop e8 as well, which I think I'm going to do in this case, now that he's put his rook on c1. Fm is fide master. Yeah, I do indeed, Otis. I remember bitter ballin quite well. A nice Dutch bar food <laughs> or snack in general. So Otis says croquette is somewhat similar, but a bigger format of that kind of snack. Okay, good to know. This guy clearly likes it. I'm doing well in quarantine, all things considered. I have very little to complain about. Okay, queen here looks kind of annoying for him at this point. Can't play g3 because his bishop hangs. And just wait. Wait for the position to open for the bishops. The two bs. Okay. He wants this square, which is very fair. I would probably want that square too if I were him. Now, I could try to sack an exchange when he, he does land there, because he probably will. Just thinking about the best way to engineer this. Could play some waiting move. There's also knight b4 if I want to be annoying. Knight b4 sets a little trap. I might do that. Let's see if he falls for it. So if he plays... Okay, yeah, he didn't fall for it. He played a move that also protects his um, rook on c1, overprotects. I was trying for rook takes d4. Playing for tricks. 
even though they're for kids, as Ben says. Okay, let's go here. Getting out of the way of knight d6, also overprotecting this. Mm, I might not sack the exchange. We'll see. We'll see what he does here. Let's play queen here. If I sack the exchange, I'd like to keep my knight, but he has bishop takes d5 in the end, so that's why I'm not going to go for it, at least for now. Okay, let's play a6. We'll see if he keeps pressing here, a4. Nope, g3 takes his time, okay. So I could play f5 if I want. Let's do that. Kick his knight. We have to contest the knight dominance here. <laughs> Could be a wow cool. No tournaments going at the moment. SD Relentless, thank you for subscribing. Two months in a row. Cheers. Okay, he's getting way low on time. Whoa. Can I just take? What's the deal here? Don't see what he's going for. Just a peace sack out of nowhere, I guess. Very odd. Let's pin him now. That was really unexpected. Start getting some pieces over. Sometimes that happens, though. There's, you either have a blackout or you kind of panic. You don't know what to do. So I can certainly relate. We have all had those chess moments. Okay, 93 would be a nice move to get in at some point. For now, I'm just going to go for some trades, though. Keeping things very simple. Okay. Another game where I get to trade queens and win. All right, we like that. When you're converting a messy position in a time scramble, you're up material, queen trades your friend. Do I have knight f4 somewhere? Probably. Ah, oh, yeah, right here. Knight f4 check wins. Thanks, guys. Yeah, 
really nice break there when he took en passant. Maybe he just missed that the piece was hanging. But then when I took on d6, he pretty quickly played f takes g7. So maybe he realized it right afterwards. So in hindsight, I'm glad that I didn't sack the exchange. But hindsight is 2020. Ah, oh, yeah, true. There was king takes f3 if I'm not careful with my rook. Good point, Otis. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe knight f4 take and knight d3 check. Go after the queen. So that's one moment I could have done it. But yeah, when you're in a time scramble, you want to err on the side of playing like stabilizing moves, coordinating moves. Still looking for tactics. So yeah, I probably did miss a, an opportunity for that somewhere. Mostly I was just trying to trade, break down his pawn structure in the process too. All right. So one, my last three. What games do we have going here? John, is your place near to Wesley? So, uh, relatively close. He lives about 20, 25 minutes away from me. Ecstatic Broccoli, thank you for subscribing. 26 months for Ecstatic Broccoli. Wow. Dude, longtime supporter. Thank you. Says, hi, John. Always great to see you playing. A bright spot in these times. Thank you very much. It's a bright spot having you subscribing all these months, years, I can say now. Hey, Axiom Fox, greetings. Thank you. Okay, let's look at a game. Ooh, that's a check. I was wondering why that didn't just lose a knight, but that's a check right there. Black trying to win this drawn end game. Okay, so this one's a lot easier to draw than Rook and Bishop versus Rook. Rook and Bishop versus Rook, the defender has to be very careful. But Rook and Knight versus Rook, I mean, they have a Knight. It's a tricky piece, but if you're not on the edge of the board, it's not that difficult of an ending to hold. Just basically avoid forks and don't get needlessly pushed to the edge of the board where things could get dicey. Hello, hey, Tom. Glad to hear that. Thank you. Hey, GM Naroditsky with the 500 bits. Says, hey, John, it's guys. <laughs> Man, man, man. Thank you, Danya. I take it you're not playing this title Tuesday. But thank you very much to Grandmaster Daniel Narditsky. He's been streaming a lot. He has a fantastic channel, guys. So do go take a look at it. I'm going to link it right here. It's GM Narditsky on Twitch. And yesterday, he didn't stream it, but he played a, I think about a 200 game match with Magnus Carlsen on Lee Chess. It was covered by the Charlotte Chess Center. And Danya really held his own. I won't spoil it in case you guys want to go watch the uh, archive version. But Danya's a beast, tactical wizard. Great guy to learn chess from. He's been giving lessons to Gold Dust Tori uh, as part of his streams and Tori's streams. So do, do take a look at his content. Oh, we're on five minute break. All right, guys, I'll be right back. <laughs> man, man, man. <laughs> I mean, this is this is Danya. He's just a god. I mean, the guy the guy sees everything. I, I just get crushed every game. Just, I mean, it's unbelievable. <laughs> a Greek god, yes. <laughs> Doesn't miss a thing. Of course he sees it. Yep. In point one second, of of course he sees it. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll be right back. We're three. We're four rounds in. I have three out of four. Let's try to do as good as that in the second half after taking the Swiss Gambit, where I lost the first game. This is ten rounds, Trabe. Brb.
Okie doke. Ready to dig in to round five when it starts here in a moment. Yeah, go check out the Charlotte Chess Center archive version. I'll link to them as well. Because uh, Fide Master Peter Giannatos, he's the owner of the Charlotte Chess Center. He covered, I believe, basically the entire match. So you can go over there if you're interested in checking out that match. It's like a five-hour stream, but you can fast forward, look at some relevant parts. The whole pot has indeed arrived. I had to make an emergency trip to Target the other night because my coffee pot broke. Not only was it producing far less than the required amounts of coffee in the carafe, but the carafe itself, I, I like chipped it when I was cleaning it. So that was a sign. I needed to replace it immediately. Had to go take an emergency Target run and I got a Mr. Coffee. And then proceeded to make coffee at 9.30 p.m. just to make sure it was working, you know run it through a couple times. Uh, absolutely essential, agreed. Have you seen all the mainstream chess Twitch streamers getting into chess because of Nakamura? Pretty cool to see. Yeah, I heard there was some talk of organizing some Twitch chess rivals. I think Hikaru even hinted at that. I don't know if it's happening for sure. But maybe that's one reason why these top guys are starting to play a little bit more. Hopefully a lot of people getting into the game stick around. All right, here we go. Let's play E4 against Gandhi Van. Man, man, man. Gandhi Van. Okay, I'm going to play my usual King's Indian attack against the French. This is my attempt to play Danya style. Not Tancredi style, Danya style. But with opposite colors. Like, he's a big King's Indian guy. And uh, I definitely can't profess to be at his level or anywhere close. But I can try to play it from the white side <laughs> a little bit. So e5 is met by knight e7, and that is a hard pawn to protect. So I'll go c3. Thanks, Tanya. Okay. All right, I'll do this and then d4. He immediately challenges, okay. Let's take. Wayne Beam, thank you for subscribing. Two months. This is Get Him John. Thank you. Appreciate that. Hmm. So knight f1, customary move, but it's met by the capture on d4. Could throw in bishop g5 at some point. But I don't trust it. I have problems on f2 as well. What would Danya do? He wouldn't be spending all this time. That's for sure. <laughs> I'm going to play knight b3. It's more of a John style move, but let's do it. We'll go here. Okay, I coordinated. Andre, thank you for subscribing. Twitch Prime. You'd be calling him a Roman god, exactly. That's right. Okay, let's take. This guy does not care about the d5 point. The knight coming into d3 is kind of nasty. Not going to lie. All right, let's take once. I feel like I got to play this sharp. 
I gotta go here, and then on knight d3, rook e7. Maybe he missed that. Hmm. Okay, let's go here. Ashner, thanks for giving that sub to med student. Now, thing is, I'm not really threatening to take, I guess, because of queen f2. I mean, maybe, maybe. We'll see. It's possible I should have put the queen here. But these are minor details. Okay, I actually am threatening to take, I'm noticing, because my bishop defends the knight after the pawn is captured. So what is he going to play, like h6 or something? h6, I can even play bishop takes h6 if I want. Yeah, let's do that. Bishop takes, I take on e5. I'm on d5 as well. Okay, double. I can take. Bishop's loose on c6. Maybe could have done that the previous move, but... Okay. Obviously, time the biggest factor now. Oh. King escapes, maybe? Just trying to coordinate here. I know he gets b2. I want my queen a little bit closer. Play rook g5. Oh, did I blunder this? Yikes. Man, man, man. <laughs> okay, this is not easy, though. I can take g6 with the pawn if he takes, I think. Buh. Not looking good. He wins my knight. Wins everything with check. Rook f6. Oh, man. I, man, man, man. I went down in flames there. I tried to get my, my queen over to help out. Probably should have just taken on g7. That would have been the far more sensible thing to do.
Rook H5 instead of Rook G5? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rook, Rook H5 check. And the bishop here, Queen E7 maybe? Hmm. Bishop h6, queen e7, queen g7, rook h6. Oh, that's a nice line. That's a very nice one. Danya, the tactics master. Yeah. Yeah, that position should be winning, but obviously I did not convert. Had a very good feeling right around here. I had the knight takes c4 idea. Uh, rook e7 was another move I briefly considered, but... No dice. Yeah, knight d6, it's too bad that doesn't win material outright. Aside from just the pawn on d5. Hmm, okay. Well, chalk up that loss. 3 out of 5. Is Faruja still playing? He is. Yep, got to work on that time management, guys. Always. Okay, definitely expect Faruja just to cleanly convert this. <clears throat> Up two pawns. King's helping out the rook pawn as well. Why didn't I take his queen on g7? I don't think there was an opportunity to do that. And Ferruja does win. Anish Giri also playing. He wins. Okay. Two games left. Ooh, locked end game right here. Black playing for a win, but... How does black ever break through here? Who has the worst bishop in this case, guys? Who would you say? Is it black with his bishop, like, unable to attack any of white's pawns or even get around his own pawns? Or white, caged in by black's pawns? I would say black has the worst bishop, right? Because white could at least sacrifice for a black pawn. Pawn forest, yeah. <laughs> that was a funny position. Okay, playing FM Jerry. Yeah, I guess they drew that by the 50 move rule. That's funny. Hey, Bursell1 donated $10. Thank you, man. Very kind of you. Thanks again for all your generosity today, guys. All right, we're playing another Scandi here. The second one of the day. Thank you, Sultan. And then, thank you for subscribing to Twitch Prime. Queen d8. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> Buckle up. Mainline Queen d8. <laughs> John, you have grass and flowers growing out of your head. Good to see you. Thank you, man. Whoa, g3. Okay, that's a weird move to play in this instance. But probably playable. If I take, take, he's going after the pawn on b7. All right, let's just proceed in the usual way. Queen e6, Scandi next? You never know. Okay, this line is not a problem. Whoa, Innovative Panda with a thousand bits says go hashtag Team Scandi. Innovative, thank you so much. Very nice of you, thank you. Innovative, also a regular on Danya's channel as well as the Charlotte Chess Center channel. Okay, I never really mind if they weaken their position like this. I always think this is kind of nice for black. You have some weaknesses to poke against. We Scandi players like to poke and prod, so we're all about that. Let's play queen b6, hit this pawn. I got a nice bishop here. Okay.
play the rook over. He jumps the knight. All right. So no knights hopping around to worry about. I'm going to try to wedge the queen in. Maybe minority attack. We'll see. We'll see how aggro he gets on the king side. He just wants to kick me out, it seems. Bishop, bishop to d1 coming. I have a means of escape. So, I'll do this. <clears throat> All right, let's take. Minority attack it is. Okay, so on b4, he's probably going to take and play... <clears throat> sorry, my voice is going. a4. So I'm just making sure I have something decent against that. Like maybe queen c2. Look for a swap and attack that pawn. I could also play queen c4. Maybe that's the better thing to do first, just to try to get a slightly superior queen position. If he takes, I can take with the rook. Okay, he doesn't take. Now b4 seems like a good idea. Let's do it. So we're trying to create a weakness against this structure, guys. That's the whole point. I'm going to try to take over the file here. I'm not going to release the tension quite yet. Let's see if we can keep him with this weak pawn to maybe worry about. Possibly, especially if there's a trade, I might go uh, attack that pawn on b2. Yeah, let's play this now. Mm-hmm. Bishop g5, is that annoying for him? Might be. Let's try. So rook d3 I can take, maybe. I guess now he's fine. He can take with the pawn. But a little more to think about for him. Maybe bishop c1. Get really creative here, guys. Maybe I can go b3 first and then rook c, uh, bishop c1. Let's do that. It's like, how does he move here? He sees what I'm up to. Okay, go back. Now we do need to play a little faster. Go for the king. Okay. Try for h6, I think. He can't go his, bring his queen in here because he gets mated. Oh man, leaf blowers are, are back. Could check there, but he's just going to play bishop e5, so let's not do that yet. Bishop f4 is now a huge threat. So he's going to trade. Okay. 
He's desperate. He's sacking everything. We got him on the run, guys. Got him on the run. These pawns are going to take it. The Scandi pawns marching home. There we go. All right. 2-0 with the Scandi today. It's a good day for hashtag Team Scandi. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Interesting position right there. Yeah, he just had a hard time moving. Didn't directly play queen g1 because he's going to escape with king h3, so it's more uncomfortable for him if I just let him chill. I actually thought maybe he should go here and try to wiggle his king out somehow, like in a messy time, scram time scramble situation. At least try to head over here. But yeah, I mean, he, he tried to break through with h5. If I go back... Right here, this got interesting. He's giving me this pawn prisoner dilemma. But after takes, now I'm threatening bishop h4, which would be a crucial deflection because he'd have to either take or play queen g3. But uh, queen takes f4, queen... Oh no, queen h1 is not mate. Okay, so maybe I'm not threatening that. Although, yeah, I guess I'm threatening queen h1, king g3, rook g1, to be precise. So it's not mating one if I get to deflect his queen, but was Bishop C1 first winning? In which position? Because I was looking at Bishop C1 way earlier, like even right around here. I held off on playing it for a moment though. I <laughs> I did see that tricky drizzle. Peter was hating on ICC, one of the OG chess chess servers. He was doing it in jest though, of course. He was saying I was a hipster for still playing on it. <laughs> I pawned my chess set. Yeah, you know, I might be working on some updated Scandi material for Chessable. So do, t do stay tuned on that. I could have something for you guys in the coming months. We shall see. Surfing USA, thanks for the 300 bits. So Scandylicious, absolutely. That was a pretty textbook minority attack, the way it developed. Uh, I didn't ever take on c3. I pushed b3 instead, but you can see that the weaknesses, you can see how the weaknesses begin to develop when you employ that plan. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, man. <laughs> I tried to play C takes D5. <laughs> man, man, man. <laughs> Novelty, knight takes D5. All right. That's brutal. Oh, my gosh. I don't even know what to say about that, guys. Seems like at least one big mouse slip in Title Tuesday is what I can expect. Variant of the Halloween Gambit, yeah. <laughs> and it's not even an E4 opening, it's a D4 opening. A little harder to get compensation. <laughs> oh, that's that's tough. That's a hard one to stomach, guys. All right, I'm going to try to make this complicated. It's pretty hard when you're just straight up down a piece. But we'll see what we can cook up. Alpha zero move right there. Yeah, fix the center. I was trying to fix the center. That's what happens when you have your knight right next to your uh, your C pawn. The happy marriage with the C pawn in front of the knight 
Sometimes you accidentally click on the knight instead. If my pawn was back on c2, I wouldn't even have been looking at knight takes d5 or c takes d5. Wouldn't have been possible. <laughs> oh, this is not going well. He's just getting to develop pretty nicely. I'll try to preserve some pieces. Queen a5, if he wants to trade queens. Weaponize the clock. I will try. I am up a little bit on the, on the clock at the moment, so... Let's pour some more coffee, gather ourselves. Okay, I see a slight trap I can try. Very, very slight. If he goes rook c8 and tries to take, okay, all right. Hmm. It's castle. Need to get coordinated. Try to do something against this queen side, although it will be difficult. I don't know. I feel like I need to get rid of that knight, even though he can blockade. Got to protect my pawn on c5. Okay, he's letting me take on b5. Probably not best. Just got to do it. Do it and see. This guy wants his knights. The knight pair, yes. Okay, if he moves this knight, I can run the pawn. At least we have that going. Maybe rook c4. And he's playing it calm. Mm, okay, let's try. Knight here, rook here. Maybe I can pick off that pawn on a7. Let's go here. Oh, he's looking for this. <sighs> Didn't see that. I guess I can play Ricky one. Just play fast. I'm on the e6 pawn if he moves his knight. But I couldn't take because he was mating me there. Nice little mating construction. Hmm. Looks like there should be something here, but maybe not. Just go here. Push. Hmm. I don't know. Try for rook f8.
let him take some stuff with check, I guess. Has to be done. Ah. He's going for the simplifications. Those knights. Oh, check. That's a problem. Okay, time to resign. Uh, I did. I did make it somewhat complicated. I felt like he was being very careful, almost a little too careful in converting it. So I was able to somewhat make it interesting, but didn't ever really see like I had much there. <laughs> Knight go hop, yes. Chess Coach John, thank you for gifting a sub to Premier Chess. Ah, uh, you gotta play it out, Sothia meant. Gotta try. Yeah, Knights are too tough. But I think he missed a few things in the opening. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like he was probably intending to just get the pawn back here with rook c8, rook takes c5, but there's some b4 ideas if he does that, because if take on Passant, I win his rook. All right, um, who else do we have here that we could take a look at? As far as the standings... Many players still on 6 out of 6, including Little Peasant. Shout out to Little Peasant. Grandmaster Alejandro Ramirez. Yeah, thanks again, Chess Coach John. Alejandro lost to Hikaru. Ooh, okay, so he's on 6 out of 7 now. I'm clinging to a positive score, but that last one hurt. Knight takes d5. <laughs> Black is trying to grind out a win here. Knight in 2 versus Knight in 1. Gonna be tough. Hmm. Yeah, I had an endgame very similar to this recently. This is a dead draw. Okay, be careful if you're white. Whoa, f4? Okay, this is funny because this might be exactly what I had. Oh, and white lost on time. This might be exactly what I had in a recent video. If white had played king e2 here, you want to know to play f3 check rather than taking. Because if you take on g3, king f1, king g2. And this is a draw, actually, against the doubled pawns. But uh, if black plays f3, on the other hand, and then gives the f pawn, works their way in with the king... And, and wins the G-pawn, black is dead winning there. So that would have been interesting to see how that played out, but white flagged after F4. But if you're interested in that endgame, yeah, I posted a video not long ago. Something about learning from my blunder against a Grandmaster. Okay, who is left in this round? That's it. Okay, we're on another five-minute break. Got it. The double Swiss Gambit, yeah. I'll be right back, guys. Starting back up again in a few minutes.
I mean, how many leaves do they have to blow out there? How many leaves are in this neighborhood? I think it's a bunch of dead grass and stuff. There's like a team of five just going around. Everything in sight. They know it's Title Tuesday. <laughs> Might be some sort of spring cleaning in the in the neighborhood. Perchick, thanks for the 200 bits. Says appreciate your positive attitude even during a mouse slip. Yeah, thanks, Perchick. That was a funny moment. Be the cranky old man that runs out and waves the fist. No, I, I definitely appreciate it. Especially people going out and working during these uh, coronavirus times. Bob Marley died, says, John watched your video with Magnus on Chessable yesterday. Very fun watching you guys go through that game. Cool. Yeah, you guys can pick that up. It's a free course we have on Chessable featuring Magnus going over a game he played against Li Chao back in 2015 at the Cutter Masters. Very tactical game, opposite side Castle and Grunfeld game. And we'll be releasing the full strategy course based on Magnus's games very soon. Yes, Innovative Panda. And let me link you guys to the article. And Chess Coach John, thanks for the 100 bits, by the way. Awesome. Thanks, Chess Coach John. You can definitely direct anyone my way who might be interested in the lessons. Here's the article with the updated times for not only my match with Greg Shahadi this Saturday, but also the match between Alina Kashlinskaya and Teddy Coleman, which is on Thursday, so coming up in just a couple days. All right, we will be getting underway in a moment here. Let's try to finish strong, guys. Don't think they've updated these standings, at least yet. What do I think is more solid, e5 or c6? They both can be played in very solid ways. Hard to go wrong there. Common boa, and I assume you mean against e4. So either double king pawn or karakon. Marshall, thanks for the 100 bits. All right, here we go. Plumalka, let's play knight f3. Let's try to avoid any mouse slips. I get another crack at the white pieces. Whoa, and Redfish Blow just gifted five subs to the community. Thank you very much, Redfish. Redfish Blue, I should say. I'm thinking of the leaf blowers. <laughs> Thanks again, Redfish. Okay, let's go for this plan. Gifting those subs to Eddie Adams, Solzet, A. Morphy, Kyle Moto, and Dutch Disaster. Thank you so much. Okay, jump in. So, long maneuver to get the d5 square, but completely thematic in this type of position. He subbed to the leaf blowers, exactly. Yeah. Okay, prep for b5 more than likely. Let's go a4. Often you can tickle with bishop g5. Try to induce that pawn here and then go back with your bishop, bishop d2. This is some old school stuff right here. Hey guys, this is Leaf Blower. Yeah. <laughs> and black gave up the light square bishop. That's usually a, a bit of a win for white. A strong, unopposed light square bishop. Which we're definitely going to keep. Okay. Now, moves I'm considering here, bishop d2, a5. Let's 
Let's play bishop d2. Black might play a5, but okay, they go back. Could throw in a check, maybe? Yeah, let's throw in a check and then bishop here. Just oppose this bishop, maybe e3 on the way. Okay, go back. Ooh, b5. This seems risky. Like, I have the option of taking now and playing a5. I could also just try to invade with my pieces and play for activity. That might be the best way to go. Because the a5 pawn will probably be blocked when black plays d5. So let's do it this way. Going for that activity. Now rook a7, queen a4, I think is what I'm going to do. Now, black does have a strong center, and black would like to play d5, but even on d5, like, stuff starts to get weakened on this diagonal. So I feel pretty good about this position. If the rook moves, maybe rook d7 is an option, looking to double or take on d5 in the future. Rook d7, queen e8, queen a7, perhaps. That hits a lot of things, actually. There's also queen d7. But rook d7, queen e8, queen a7 looks thematic. It's also even bishop a5, man. A lot of moves to choose from here. Okay, I'm going to go rook d7, queen e8, queen a7, and on rook a8, I think I'm going to try to go here and then here. Because black can chase me. They almost like have to in a way because can't. Mm, maybe they can move the knight. But queen c7 looks pretty nasty. Queen c7 here. Okay. Hmm. Huh. Let's go here. Big pressure. Trying to watch my time, though. As usual. Hard to find a move here for black. Threatening rook takes g7 or bishop takes d5. Looks like things are collapsing. Because d4 I can just take here. I'm threatening mate in two after that. Yeah, this should be winning. Okay. Mm -hmm. Step here. Threaten that bishop. And I'm going to keep the uh, pressure on the back rank. So again, it's hard for black to move this piece. Now, yeah, here I can just take. All right. Convert that one. Okay, so keeping a pawn out of the center on move one, away from a potential clash, like there was no immediate tension with the pieces or pawns for the first many moves, that proved to be a useful hedge against a mouse slip. 
Not playing scared, though. Still went for the attack. But nice to get a victory after that mouse slip. Yeah, I think Black's decision to play b5 was a little too risky. Because I want to open the position for my two bishops here. And it's just, I think it's too hard for Black to keep it together at this point. So I feel pretty good about that game. Nice English game. Okay, that gives us a chance to watch somebody at the top here. Vidit and Anur. Let's see if we can watch Vidit if he's playing. Uh, let me just see if I can follow Vidit. Mm, I think he's done. Okay, let's watch Hikaru then. Against Verde. These guys are a half point back. Oh no. Yeah, a half point back. Yeah, six and a half out of seven. Okay. Karu probably just winning here. Yep, he's going to promote that pawn. So he gets to seven and a half out of eight. Very fine score. How about Bortnik? Ooh, this is a young prodigy. Russian guy. Good player. Looks like Bortnik, Bortnik should convert here. Needs to win that A pawn, though. Bishop B5 coming. Just got to stave off those pawns. Ooh, and black drops F7. Yep. Easy win for white if he manages this his time. Bishop B5, take the pawn. Did I see Nakamura in Billions? I don't watch that show. Uh, I did see that he had a cameo in it. Membrane. Hey, thanks for the nice message. Says he went from 900 to 1600 on Lee Chess Blitz since finding your channel. Thank you very much. Thanks for letting me know. Appreciate you watching. Okay, watch stalemate opportunities. If, for example... Black had rook takes a4 in a position where white was controlling the 6th rank. That would be a problem, but okay. Black just resigned here as soon as the black king was not on a5. So good score for Bortnik. What about Fier versus Paramov? Paramov wins. Christopher Yu. Tough young player. He resigned here in this rook ending. Down two pawns with the black rook behind the pawn. This player's on seven points. Vincent Kamer. Okay. Wow. All the prod prodigies are out in full force today. Young German player. He won the uh, Grenka Open not long ago. Last year, I believe. Okay. M. Baches. Oh, is that right? Venomous? Very nice of him. All right, let's keep it going, guys. Third Scandy game of the day. Let's do it. He plays knight c3. All right. We're going to force this queen to d5 one way or the other. <laughs> okay, this line I've played before. Knight f6 is not a threat, so you do not have to stress about it because black can play knight takes f6 and guard the queen. This, I think, is just bad for white. I think white's just losing a piece here. Pin. This might be the fastest I've ever won a piece in the scanty. Hey, I'll take it after that other game. Okay, bishop c4, probably knight f6 here. Just to really avoid any nastiness, queen f7 and whatnot. I like it. d4, knight takes d4. We're all good here, guys. <laughs> oh, you know it, Black Squall. D6 
disguised FN, I, I see your question. I'm going to refrain from answering for now just because uh, I'm in the middle of a game and I want to convert this. But thank you for the question. I do appreciate that. Okay, he's trying to just allow me to take on C2. He's trying to save his piece. It's creative, but yeah, I think I can just go after the exchange. Should be very good. Just seeing if there's anything I can also do here. Yeah, I think just take. And then knight takes c2 coming. He can take on f6 if he wants. Uh, he can play knight takes g3. That was probably his intention. But yeah, let's just go for this. Easiest way to play. And just look to get castled here. If here I have rook c8. We'll see if white goes after my knight or if they try to delay that decision. But I think it's e6, bishop out next. f3. Hmm, wasn't expecting that. All right. Not sure why he played f3. Mm, let's go a6. Threaten f4. So the knight is going to perish, but no worries. We're up in exchange plus a pawn. Let's go bishop here. Probably look to play a piece to d5 or maybe maybe just push the e-pawn in the future too. Good plan. I was thinking about playing bishop d5 here. Okay. Go c5. See where that knight wants to go. Okay, take. Play knight here, opening up the attack. Okay, now let's not, not blunder this checkmate. That would be bad. I think I can play rook. Oh, no, rook into b2 would be bad, too. Don't do that. <laughs> okay, let's go here.
Attack, attack. Okay, pawn coming. Very messy here. Leaf blower starting up again. Oh, come on, John, play a move. Oh, I think I got it. <laughs> I almost fumbled that at the end. <laughs> they tried. They tried with the leaf blowers, but I got the job done. I almost, like, fumbled on a long-range move. Where was it, like? Somewhere around here. <laughs> These guys, you got to kill them, like, three different times. Opening, middle game, end game. Amherstall, thanks for the 500 bits. I did a worse job of converting compared to my opponent I mouse slipped against. Let's chalk that up. But got the job done in the end. Probably needlessly weakened my position with all these pawn pushes. Like, he was kind of waiting for that, actually. Which, at the time, I, I sensed, but I was just trying to make a move. I mean, this was so sloppy. It was ridiculous. <laughs> SKD, thanks for the 500 bits. Could you have gained a piece earlier instead of the exchange? Well, I could have taken on... Well, I don't know, because, okay, right here, after he plays bishop c4, if I take here, he's going to play check. And then he wins the bishop on f8, so I don't want to do that. And let me go back to the beginning. I can't actually click on moves, which is really annoying. I mean, I can click on them sometimes, but it's harder when you want to back up. So I played knight f6, therefore. And he played d4, which is pretty creative. If I take with the queen here, then it, he might have knight d2 protecting the bishop. And if I take on e4, he can take e5, and my knight on f6 is hanging. Okay, Fandarine. 28-43. This is the last round of the tournament, guys. I'm sorry to give you heart attacks. Apologize for that. <laughs> okay, let's go c3 here. Queen b6, queen b3. Knight c6. Okay, I think I'm going to castle against that. Tory attack. I missed a maiden one. I guess I wouldn't completely doubt that. Okay, I have take here, take here. I can take here, but there's rook b8. I know I've looked into this line in the past. Let's go rook d1. If he takes, I'm going to take with a pawn. Get this half open A file. Okay. Yeah, let's step here. And now undermine.
take here. I want to keep control over the e4 square. Tink. Let's go here. Look to expand. If he plays bishop c2, c5, after the trade, I have rook b1, and I'm going to go after that pawn on b7. There might even be other tactical problems for him there. Yeah, I think seven or seven and a half is my record for title Tuesday. But they have changed the number of rounds. Nine, ten rounds. They kind of switch it up. E5, very sharp. Probably a good move, though. I don't know, though. Take, take here, take here. I'm not sure what's going on there. Let's try that. Just opening up the attack on his bishop. I wonder if he can take, take, and then rook takes here. That would be interesting. Place queen takes. Hmm. Okay, so if I trade and then rook d to b1, he's going to take on e5, I think is his point. So I'm going to attempt to keep this complicated. Takes. Hmm. Ah, he's just going to play bishop takes e5. Okay, so maybe I can throw this move in. Let's try that. Getting out of the way of this bishop. Oh, he takes. He's going for the pieces. All right. Interesting. Bishop takes e2 now. Okay, let's take here. Does have several pieces for the queen, to be fair. F4. I'm going to go for an attack against f7. I didn't see that we get that many pieces for the queen. Still, though, his position is kind of unstable. So, like, if knight c4, queen d5... Or queen d7, bishop coming to e7? I don't know. Hard to say. Step here. Ah, uh, maybe you can trade in rookie six. Ah, uh, rookie six right away. Not over though. Mm. 
I get mated if I take his knight. It's funny. Okay, try to hide my king to the best of my abilities. Want f5. Although it's not a threat here. Hey, I got him. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was an insane victory at the end. Seven out of ten. Hey, got an unexpected flag. <laughs> Thanks, Numidian Merc. Oh, thank you, guys. Oh, just got totally messy at the end. Yeah, one of those just wacky time scramble positions. Queen versus multiple pieces. He had two minor pieces and a rook against my queen, but there was some uncertainty on f7, and I actually think he navigated it pretty well. h6 is probably a good move. I would bet he was intending bishop h4, g5. But uh, yeah, I was able to create some trouble there. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Um, let's just see if we can... Tune into a top game that's probably going. Hikaru won. He gets to nine and a half. He's probably tied for first at minimum. Yeah, definitely at least first there for Hikaru. Uh, who else is playing? Feruja and Azeri chess. Feruja beats Mamadyarov. Powerful. Okay, so that, I think, makes Hikaru the outright winner of this title Tuesday. Yeah, because he, he just beat Bortnik, and Azari Chess is the only one who could catch him. CL Smith, thanks for the thousand bits. This is great tournament, John. Thanks for the years of instructive content. Hey, cheers. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think my best title Tuesday score was 7 or, or 7.5. But again, um, Title Tuesday has changed from 9 rounds to 10 rounds. So I think in the 9-round version, probably 6.5 was my top score. I don't think I ever got 7 out of 9. Maybe once. So in 10 rounds, yeah, I think this is either... This is probably tying my best score. I'll have to check, though. On move 24 for that last game, would Rook B8 work? Let's check. You said move 24. Rook b8. Hmm. I did not consider that move. Rook b8 check. Does he have to take, though? What if he goes here? I can take here. My gosh, there's so many pieces under attack. He takes here, I take here, take here. <laughs> he still has two bishops against a rook when all is said and done. Maybe. Yeah, might have. This position was mad at the end. Absolutely mad. Yeah, and he consolidated and was probably just winning, but then he kind of hesitated. He got his bishop kind of stuck on the back rank. And I got my queen wiggled in, and all of a sudden... I had some stuff going here. Rook f7, and he couldn't adjust. He needed to play king to e6. Okay, tournament over. Hikaru wins. 9.5 out of 10. Congrats to Hikaru. He's been streaming a lot lately. Feruja gets second, 9 out of 10. And Le Quang Liem, also on 9 out of 10. Tough event here. As always. Thank you, one in 144K. This is greetings from Mexico. Appreciate it. 
Well, up and down tournament. Title Tuesday tends to be like that. I lost my first game against Barant over Preston, that Sicilian. Got into a time scramble. Then I proceeded to win three games in a row. Then I lost to Gandhi Vam, the Indian Grandmaster, from that very promising position, but just huge time pressure problems. Uh, then I was back and forth a little bit, strung together a couple victories. I did have that really unfortunate mouse slip. <laughs> Knight takes d5. That'll probably be going in the title of the uh, archive version on YouTube. Thanks, Avenger. Glad you liked it. But I was able to finish the tournament with three victories in a row. Who is Fandarine? Let's check out who this player is. Maxim Shigeev. Shigeev. Yeah, this guy's pretty good, from what I recall. I think this guy used to be, if I'm not mistaken, one of the strongest IMs in the world. Like... 25, 50-ish Fide I am before he got his title. Black Squall says, I feel like you have a 9 out of 10 in you if you go on a hot run. Well, thank you. Knight takes d5 novelty. Yeah, let's let's check to see if that's a novelty according to the chess.com database. I'm sure it's been played in uh, bullet games, blitz games, people mouse slip online. But let's check the uh, old opening explorer, huh? Okay, so we got in terms of popularity, knight f3, c takes d5, bishop g5, etc. Ooh, yeah, we might have a novelty on our hands. I mean, it is a rarity in this day and age to produce a novelty on move 4, guys. So I'm going to take some solace in that. I didn't get the victory, but I contributed to our modern understanding of chess with this knight sacrifice. So I hope that this, this game will be studied by many grandmasters and players of all strengths for years to come. The stem game was a little bit weak, but I feel like we can improve upon it. So don't be surprised if you start to see knight takes d5, the MJB gambit, yes. Don't be surprised if you start to see that being played more often by the absolute world elite. So you heard it here, heard it here first, remember that. You were all witnesses. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to head out. Thank you so much for watching today. Really appreciate all the support. Just to read out a few people. Uh, Redfish Blue gifted five subs. Belgian Novice gifted 10 subs to the channel. Shout out to both those guys. Charles M4 gifted five subs as well to start off the stream. Jay Chester, cheers, man. My student, he's awesome. He gifted $10. Uh, also, we had... Several people gifting bits. Innovative Panda with the 500. CL Smith with the 1,000. Blue Lagoon just now with the 100 bits. Says, nice MJB Gambit. Thanks for taking one for the future of chess re research. Yeah, exactly. It's hard for the pioneers. You have to make sacrifices. Just like the first, the first person in space. So, yeah, thanks again, Blue Lagoon. Amherstall, AKD, Eschner, H2G2. Uh, H2G2, by the way, about a half hour ago donated $2 and said, Hey, John, I always enjoy your using the clock as a weapon series. Did you know that any piece can be used as a weapon if you throw it hard enough? Good thinking there. Perchick, thanks again. Uh, lots of people gifting subs to Chess Coach John, Eschner. I, I mentioned some of the other big sub gifters before. Ecstatic Broccoli with the 26 months, longtime supporter. Really appreciate that, guys. SD Relentless, Doug Stone, CST Gene, Cool, Shatula, uh, D Cambered, Moxie Berry, Checkmate, Wayne Beam, resubscribing, another student of mine. Thanks, Wayne. Also, Membrane55, Surfing USA with the 300 bits, Dr. Aragon, The Magician. I think I hit most everyone, but if I missed your name, please know that I really appreciate it. So thanks again, guys. It's a lot of fun to hang out with you. <laughs> Am I two games away from GM? I am two Grandmaster Norms and a 2500 rating away from GM. So definitely a lot of work to, to take care of there. Yeah, thanks, Jay, Jay Chester. Appreciate it. Take care as well. All right. So I'm going to head out, guys. Just figuring out who I want to send this raid to. 
thinking about sending it to Robert Hess, one of the commentators of the I Am Not a GM tournament. It's always a bit of a fear that someone's going to stop streaming right after Title Tuesday, just like I am, if we send a raid at, that way, but looks like he's continuing. Yeah, he's playing some Blitz. So I'm going to send you guys over to Grandmaster Robert Hess. So, uh, Pawn My Chess Set, yes I am. Please feel free to whisper me if you're interested in lesson lessons, or if you're watching this in the future on YouTube, you can send me a message. Oh, that was nice of Hikaru. Apparently gave me a shout out. Congrats again to him today. Fine performance. All right, later guys. Enjoy your day. Thanks for watching.